What is going on everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture, and I got an awesome video today. We're going to be looking at what comic books are going to look like over the next 10 to 20 years. Yes, I'm going to give you my thoughts on where we're going to be at. Doom and gloom, or boom, <laughs> continued boom. We shall see, right? And this topic was suggested by good friend of the channel and a patron supporter, Joe G. Joe, thank you so much. I'm going to read Joe's uh, uh, questions and topics of discussion. Before I do that, though, and before we dive into this video, of course, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Be sure to check out all the awesome links below as well. And again, if you want to learn how to become a patron member of the channel for only $3.99 a month, check out the link. Check out my site there on patreon.com. Uh, you get all kind of extra perks every single month, including automatic entry into my patron only contest. And we get to do uh, one of these every month as well. So let's get into this. I'm going to read Joe's questions that he has here on this topic. I'm going to read it all and then we're going to dive into point by point. All right. Joe states, here's an interesting one. Looking forward 10 to 20 years, etc. What will comics evolve into? Yes, I love this question. He goes on to state, for instance, will print media be a thing? This is a good one. Will we still have stories based mainly on the major characters, teams, uh, that we know, or will they be supplanted by today's new kids on the block? Again, I, I, I love this, Joe. Joe goes on to state, this question is tied to the one above, but I think it deserves its own spot. We can see that we're uh, trading the antiquated guidelines of the CCA, Comic Code Authority, for newer taboos and elements that people are sensitive to, which are much more relevant to today. I agree, Joe. That's true. Uh, instead of shying away from tough topics like racial, economic tensions, mass violence, political unrest, etc., should publishers be brave and bring forth stories that may help us understand and overcome the challenges that we have today? He goes on to say that I do believe if there is censorship, uh, it's going to be nothing like what we saw in the 60s and 70s. Okay, Joe, that last piece there, I'm going to talk about that towards the end of the video because that is kind of its its own thing. So let's dive into these first couple of talking points, okay? And that's the big question on the table here is what are comics going to look like in the next 10, 20 years? Um, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of naysayers in this hobby. Doom and gloom. Uh, they think that the comic book industry is going to pop it's a bubble it's dying print media is going it's going to disappear and all this stuff and i'm i'm going to sit and, and tell you guys it's i don't believe it i think in the next 10 to 20 years comic books are going to look pretty much like they do today absolutely will the cover price continue to increase <laughs> uh yeah you know i mean look regardless everything increases we know that uh we can't uh stray from uh from that happening you know, inflation is absolutely real. Now, the thing to counter that, I hope, is that the uh, living wages are going to continue to uh, uh, rise to more living wages, like the minimum wage and so forth. I believe we are going to be compensated in a fairer way to where our dollar can get stretched more be being put back into the economy, which is going to help with what we love, comic books, right? But I think overall, they're going to look very, very similar, all right? Uh, Joe went on to ask about um, print media being a thing. So let's talk about that. Let's tie that into this first real talking point. I think the biggest thing that I hear that people are scared of is the print floppy comic book disappearing. Let me put some things into perspective, all right? Digital media... All right, we have Marvel Unlimited, DC rolled out their DC Universe Unlimited or whatever they want to call it just recently. But over the last 10 years, since its inception, since digital comics came about about 10 years ago, all right, there was initial growth over the first couple of years. But over the last five, six years, digital comics have stayed at about 10% of the market. 10%. And it's been that. So this idea that digitals are taking over, it's just, it's absolutely asinine, guys. It's crazy. Do I feel that digitals are going to take more of that percentage over the next 10 to 20 years? I do. I do. But I don't think, even in 20 years from now, I don't think digitals are going to be even 50% of the market. I think maybe we could be looking at 25 to 35% because the things that you need to understand is that the internet thing, internet of things is going to drastically change. 
It's going to drastically change. We keep phones in our pockets right now when we have laptops and all this stuff. I think in the next 10 to 20 years, we're going to be like seeing, we're going to have, like we can wear like a wristband, right? And it's going to project like a phone screen on our arm or something like that. Or instead of having an actual TV, the wall itself is going to be the TV. Everything's going to be voice activated and, 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 and so forth. Um, we can bring out, we can have a like a little, you know, uh, like in Star Wars, uh, a little ball that's like sits on a countertop and you like swipe. You know, you know everything you see in Iron Man and all that stuff. It's coming to fruition. We can like swipe or voice activate this little ball and it projects this big screen in the middle of a room or something like that. You know, we already got smart, um, smart refrigerators, smart vacuums, everything. So shifting into all these te technologies, digital is going to evolve within comic books as well. So we will have more access to being able to read comic books digitally, but it's still not going to take away from the, from the physical copy as much as I think people think. All right. Like I said, I think over the next 10 years, uh, the digital market can definitely double. And I think by 20 years, it can triple from where it's at now. But I don't think it's going to be beyond that. I really don't. Uh, there is so much market still in uh, physical comic books. Now, look at this. I'm going to use this as, as an example. Books. Over the last 10 to 15 years, the digital book has boomed much more than the digital comic book. I'm talking about novels and, and, and whatnot, right? Um, but guess what? But guess what? Physical books have not gone away. And I don't have the, I don't have the percentages, but I can guarantee you well, I don't want to guarantee, but I'm going to estimate at the top of my head without looking at any data that the physical book market is still a, probably at least half of the market. At least. That's my guess. If anybody has those numbers, please feel free to leave the, the facts below. All right. But books, unlike comics, don't have that collectability to them. They don't have that resale value. Now, I, I'm not saying that no books do. Obviously, there are books that, that tend to be valuable or, or, you know, when you look at uh, older and older books, like first print books that may have came out uh, early, you know, a 20th century and stuff like that. I'm just talking about your standard run-of-the-mill books. All right. They're not really a collectible like comic books. They don't have that tangibility like comic books do. So that's another positive factor of what's going to keep the physical comic book around. All right. And, and again, let's we're focusing on on new comic books because nothing's going to take away from the back issues. The back issue market is not going anywhere. So 10 to 20 years down the road, the back issue market is going to be more healthy than it's ever been. Just like right now, the back issue market is healthier than it's ever been. 10 years from now, healthier than it's ever been. 20 years from now, healthier than it's ever been. Nothing's going to take away from the back issue market. All right. But even for new books, we're going to keep seeing new books being printed. They might be at a $9.99 price point, right? But hey, um, they might... Well, let, before I start talking about titles, because that goes into the other uh, question that Joe uh, posed. But another thing I do want to talk about briefly, though, is generations and what that means. So 10 to 20 years from now, um, you know, you got your, your baby boomers that grew up you know, really primed for the silver age. You know, your folks that were, were born in, in the, the mid to late 40s through the 50s that were kids and teenagers um, during the silver age, you know, they're getting older and they're going to be dying off in the next 10 to 20 years. But you got to understand that the prime market right now are is basically between the ages of 30 and 50. All right. Those are the bulk of your, your comic book uh, uh, industry enthusiasts, all right, that are putting all this money into it. In 10 to 20 years, that 30 to 50 age group is going to be, you know, 40 to 60 or, or 50 to 70. So we're still going to be here for the most part. We're still going to be here. That's not going away. But then contrary to popular belief, or I don't know if it's popular, but it sure is a loud belief. New 
collectors are coming into the hobby every day. Not only are there new collectors, when you think about people that just want to get into reading books or they collect because they want it to be a personal hobby, but you got die hard investors coming into the hobby for those tangible assets. That's not going away anytime soon. And again, on the contrary of that, more and more people are looking to it now more than ever. A lot of positives here, right? A lot of positives. All right, let's let's go back into what Joe uh, asked next. Next, he talked about stories. What are the stories going to look like ten to twenty years from now? Will we still have stories based mainly on the majority of characters and teams that we uh, all know and love so well, right? Or will they be uh, supplanted by today's new kids on the block? Okay, this is a great question because I believe right now we're in a very pivotal time where we see something unique brewing and happening. Let's go back 10 years. Let's go back 2011, 2012. 2012, Marvel revamped and did the whole Marvel Now thing. They brought on Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel, uh, changing her from Miss Marvel. Uh, they brought on, they, 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 did, they did the all new, they brought on the new, the new fresh X-Men take, uh, the, with the all new X Men, and then over the next few years, they did the all new, you know, Inhumans, all new everything, all new X Force. It was all new, all new, right? <laughs> um, there was a lot going on in the 2010s, especially for Marvel. We, well, we know DC uh, changed things up in 2011 with New 52, try to make things fresh. Uh, they more did a fresh take on their. Uh, their main characters where at a certain point Marvel took the all new approach and started revamping really revamping and replacing some of their characters you know we got Riri uh, we got Miles we got Sam Alexander and uh, we got Sa Sam Wilson took the took the shield and became Captain America um there was a lot of backlash over the last 10 years. And I'm not going to get too much into that because I don't want this to be political or anything like that. But obviously, people were really going at Carol Danvers, calling her man verse. Oh, she got a haircut. Now she's wearing tactical instead of this skimpy outfit where she's over-sexualized. You know, nobody wanted this and all that. And I'm not even going to get into that. But then, you know, you get um, Miles is a new Spider-Man. Oh, you know, uh, there was a lot of backlash. And then there's you know, a lot more diversity coming into play and people were calling, oh, first diversity and all this stuff. Now, do I agree with all those sentiments and all that rhetoric? Absolutely not. You can't force diversity in general. Uh, we, we live in a diverse world and comics for a very long time didn't reflect the real world around us. But I've always said this to those people that had issues with, the, with these things. There's a right way to do it. It's not that diversity necessarily was being forced. It was that the stories may have been forced. And my take on that is if you have a black or Hispanic or Latino character, character or a, a LGBT character, um, and you have, you know, certain people writing the stories that know nothing, that haven't, that are really out of touch with this part of society in real life then maybe it can definitely seem forced and not true to form. And at the same time, I feel like Marvel, more than even DC, put their, you know, top key characters, uh, you know, their class A characters on the back burner in place of these new characters. And I can understand how that rubbed people the wrong way. It's like, you know, okay, well, you want to bring in a, you know, you want to bring in new characters, whether it's for diversity or to keep things fresh, that's fine, but... Like you now, I don't have a, a cat storyline or or something like, or I don't have, you know, I know Spider Man's always been there. What's another one? Like Iron Man disappeared for him, and maybe you want Tony Stark as your Iron Man, you know, and Riri Williams is is fine and all, but I want Tony, something like that, right? What they're doing now, I think, is really I don't want to say perfect. But they've learned how to cater to all audiences. You know, you're always going to have those few that are going to be mad about everything. Nothing's, you know, it's always negative. Or I don't even read modern comics anymore because it's this and that. Well, if you think, it, how do you know if it's this and that if you don't read the comic books? Yeah, you're just a grumpy old man, right? <laughs> so 
what Marvel specifically, and I, I think DC has been doing a good job of this as well. They're now able to take all of these fresh characters, whether they're uh, a different ethnicity, a different gender, a different sexuality, all those, no matter if they're all those things, you, you, you can have a Miles Morales that has a mantle of Spider-Man, right? You can have a new Miss Marvel in Kamala Khan, but still have your, you know, Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. You can have um, all these different characters that speak to a whole new audience while still staying true to these, you know, class A characters that everyone, not everyone, at least folks our age and older grew up with. So, Joe, to answer this part of the question, I absolutely think we're going to keep seeing this trend of, say, this hybrid crossover of these publishers, need, Spider, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, um, Steve Rogers, Captain America, Tony Stark, Iron Man, you know, uh, Clark Kent, Kal-El, Superman, Bruce Wayne, Batman, these characters are are never going to go away. They will never go away. But you have to keep them fresh. You have to keep them fresh, but you also at the same time can continue to introduce new characters while bringing new readers in and telling stories that these new readers can relate to. And that's why Miles is so hot right now. That's why Kamala is so hot right now. Sam Alexander is getting getting hot as well. But I, it, Ri, and why Riri is getting so hot right now. You know, these characters have their own runs and they're successful. Um, I think Marvel's done a good job. It all boils down to the writing and the art, but really the writing. you got to be authentic in your writing. And I think Marvel's done a good job. You see more women writers in DC too. You see more female writers writing about female characters. You know, you there's some... Um, LGBT writers and artists working on LGBT characters. There's more minority uh, uh, writers and artists working on minority characters. So when you get people that can relate to these characters and tell authentic stories behind the character, that's when they're going to be successful. So, Joe, I absolutely believe, I've said this before and I'll say it again, UF4 is the modern day um, Hulk 181. It absolutely is. Uh, the modern day Amazing Fantasy 15. Now, does that mean it's ever going to be worth what those books are? No, but uh, it, it, it's not going anywhere. And these characters aren't going anywhere. But neither are the original characters that created the brands of DC and Marvel. All right? So I hope that kind of really summed that up. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how, how this goes. But I am extremely happy for... A, and a lot of the stories, I've been reading the stories, I mean, you know, what Donny Cates has been doing with Thor, um, I just read the first couple of issues of the of the more recent Iron Man, and, and it's such a fresh take. I'm, I'm digging the Spider-Man, I love Spider-Man, it could, it's, it has its ups and downs, but, you know, there's, there's good stuff out there right now. There's good stuff out there that can tend to the, the older collectors and there's new stuff out there with these new characters and the old characters that's that's really speaking to these younger generation of collectors as well and i don't see that going away anytime soon i see it actually getting better as the years go by and i think that's what dc is working on right now with their shakeup of things even though people think that it's all problematic and dc's failing and all this crazy stuff right all right, let's go on to what, what uh, uh, Joe was saying about looking at, you know, pushing boundaries and stuff, right? Uh, we're moving so far away from the Comics Code Authority and what they try to do to comic books, right? Um, we have more, you know, issues discussing race and economic tensions and uh, mass violence, political unrest and all these things. And I think absolutely that these issues are going to continue to be addressed. And we have to just go back and remember that this is this is what sparked the superhero. Political unrest, oppression, um, genocide, all these things are what created the superhero. Sp Superman came from uh, a, a oppressive a, a, a state of, of oppression of a certain people having to say, how can we how can we uh 
you, you know, search for something bigger than us to give us hope. And I think that's why we have uh, characters like, say, Miles Morales, who who speaks to folks that may have been the downtrodden and, and, and want to see themselves in somebody that could be bigger than life and larger than life. Uh, right. You, you know, you get that with Black Panther, you know, and um, and nowadays with, with Shuri and what Shuri's done in the comic books and you get young girls, it doesn't, whether you're black girls or, or minority girls or, or white girls, it doesn't matter. You can look at these uh, strong women being able to be uh, queens and uh, sit on a throne and, and have superpowers and just uh, we are going to keep telling stories that speak to where we are at in society and in the world today. Some people aren't going to understand some. Some people are going to be upset at some. Um, we, will, we will never rid the world of hatred, racism, bigot. I, I Actually, I hate saying that we will never rid the world. I hope that we do one day. But practically thinking, there's, there's going to be those people that just focus on hate, racism, anger, prejudice, biases, whatever it may be. And God help them, um, you know, pray for them in their shortcomings. But people are going to push through and keep telling stories. That's what art is. Art is a reflection of what we go through. And some, most of the best art comes from the struggle. Whether it's music, whether it's painting, whether it's storytelling, whether it's comic books. And that's going to continue to happen. And again, you know, you look at the, the, the business side of it. We need to keep holding the publishers accountable for making sure that they... Hire writers and artists that understand the, the art in these characters and the heart of the characters because then we could keep telling genuine stories and keep making it fresh, right? I absolutely think that's going to keep happening. I absolutely, too, believe that, you know, even though we live in a very divided world right now, whether it's even in comic books or just politics or whatever, I think that over the next 10 to 20 years, um, it may get worse before it gets better, but I, I think it's going to get better. I think we are going to see more unity moving forward. I think we are going to evolve past some of the ways of the past and get to a point, and we're going to see that reflected in, in the comic books. I think we're going to have more of a worldly view with comic books. Jim Lee said uh, last year at DC Fandom about how we, you know, it's not just about diversifying for, you, you know, different ethnicities in America. It's about diversifying in a global sense, meaning we we want to tell stories that people in Asia and in I uh, India or China or the Middle East or Africa or Europe or Russia or South America, uh, we want, we are getting fan bases in these areas that are loving superheroes and we need to tell stories that can speak to them as well. And I think God, I can just keep going, guys. There's, there's, just, there's so much positive to be said about where we are going right now. So to make my final statement on this and, and, and give my, my, my final words, the industry is not dying. The industry is evolving. All right? DC Comics and what they've done and their whole shakeup, people want their cake and they eat it too, right? They're going to complain about one thing and, 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 and then once that thing is shook up and changed, they're going to complain about what's new on the table, right? And that's what's happened with DC. Uh, we saw Marvel just, just depart from, from Diamond as well. And the same people that were saying, oh, Diamond's a monopoly. Now that we have the two big two, the big two publishers breaking away and diversifying uh, in terms of their distribution, those same people are like, oh, it's the end of print comics and all this stuff. No. The industry is evolving. We may see less monthly titles. We may see a, a bigger push on trade paperbacks. And like I said, I think that the digital uh, genre is, is, or the digital medium is absolutely going to grow. But it's only going to grow in the sense that the hobby is going to evolve. It's not going to grow to where we eliminate the floppy copy. Um, and... We may see quality over quantity. And that's what I'm seeing with DC right now. Quality over quantity. And prices may rise. Single uh, the, the, the amount of titles every month may be minimized. But we're going to get more quality storytelling, all of it. And at the end of the day, that's what everyone's been complaining about, right? 
I don't read comics because it's all this and it's all that. I don't read modern comics anymore. It's crap. The story's crap. The art's crap. Can't make everyone happy, though. I'm telling you guys, there's good stuff out there right now. And I think we're going to continue on this trend for the next 10 to 20 years. I can't wait to make a video 10 years from now and revisit this. So, that's my video for today. Joe, thank you so much for all of these awesome questions. I love talking about this stuff. I may talk about this more maybe in a couple weeks and dive into this stuff on a live stream. Hopefully after you guys watch this video, we can come live and, and, and have a live discussion on it. So again, Joe, I want to thank you. I want to thank you all for watching. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below of what you uh, thought about everything that I had to say and what you thought about the questions. Where do you see comic books in the next 10 to 20 years? And again, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. And with that being said, be well. And until next time.